Good morning, everybody. My name is Joseph Mihai. I'm from the Institute of Genetics, uh, BRC Saged. Um, in my short introduction, I uh, try to follow the guidelines provided by Professor Hedy. So first thing is a uh, major scientific interest in our lab. The major interest in my lab is to investigate actin cytoskeleton regulation in two developmentally important contexts that are external growth and myofibrillogenesis. Uh, and we use the model system Drosophila melanogaster or fruit fly. It's well known since many years that uh, axons are guided to their correct target sites by their distal tips, uh, also called growth cones. And it's also well established that uh, the actual movement of a growth cone relies on cytoskeleton regulation. However, the details of this regulatory process are not very well understood still. Um, in case of muscles, uh, it's also very well established since decades that actin filaments are very important structural and functional elements of the uh, myofibrils or even the sarcomeres. Uh, however, there is somewhat a paradoxical situation here, uh, notably that uh, in contrast to non-muscle cells where actin filaments are known to be able to grow only from their placent, in muscle cells uh, growth can also take place somehow at the minus end, however with an unknown mechanism. So these are the two major scientific questions and systems we are using uh, uh, to better understand uh, these problems. Uh, and in the next uh, few slides, I would like to give you a few more details. Uh, first about axonal growth. Uh, at the time we uh, engaged with this project, uh, it was unknown what are the uh, growth cone specific actin assembly factors. These are factors that are required for the assembly of novel actin filaments that are otherwise required for growth cone advance. Uh, so we successfully identified two of these factors. One of them is a forming type of actin assembly factor and Misha is going to tell you about more about that uh, in his talk and also the up 2 free complex. Then we uh, addressed other questions, that, uh, for example, the mechanism of philopodia formation. Uh, philopodia are slender finger-like uh, very dynamic protrusions uh, at the growth cone periphery and it's known that they are absolutely necessary for growth cone uh, advance However, and these are actin-based structures. However, uh, how these philopodia form and how the dynamics of philopodia is controlled is not very well known, so we are uh, addressing this question. Then another important question, how these cytoskeletal effector molecules uh, are linked to the guidance cues? Those are the molecules that actually uh, govern the uh, uh, growth con uh, movement. And then the final question uh, we are addressing is, uh, how actin and microtubular cytoskeleton regulation gets coordinated because it's not only actin but microtubular regulation is also equally important for uh, growth cone uh, movement. So these are the major questions we have and uh, Misha is going to tell you a little, uh, a little bit about the function of this form in DAM. Then with regard of uh, uh, myofibrillogenesis, um, we, we noted that uh, this forming is not only involved uh, in axonal growth regulation, but it's also required for proper formation of the sarcomeres. And here it controls uh, actin filament formation and some other things that I'm not going to tell you today. And uh, at the end of the day, we came up with a new model how uh, sarcomeric actin filaments form. Uh, and this is in principle based on sort of an end-to-end -end annealing uh, model. And funnily enough, uh, very lately or very recently, we, we realized that our muscle and uh, uh, neuron project somehow meet because we noticed that our favorite formin is not only required for axonal growth and sarcomerogenesis, but it's also required for neuromuscular junction formation. Uh, most notably here, it's required for synoptic buton formation and also uh, for active zone uh, organization. Active zone is the site where neurotransmitter relays takes place. So these are our major topics. And then uh, next thing, I'm supposed to tell you about the techniques and uh, collaborators. Uh, we are using a 
quite broad range of techniques in the lab, uh, classical and advanced methods of genetics, also molecular techniques, biochemistry, biophysics, and we are doing a lot of microscopy, including uh, super resolution microscopy that we do in collaboration with other labs. And we have collaborators from all over the world, maybe not from New Zealand, but uh, from different continents. Um, and at the end, uh, we published some papers over the last years. These three highlighted ones are perhaps the most relevant to, to what I told you uh, a little bit today. Uh, two of these came out in uh, General of Neuroscience and the third one in PLOS Genetics that are quite uh, decent uh, journals, I think. And at the very end, uh, I'm supposed to tell you a little bit about our senior the student. So, in a nutshell, Mishi is, uh, is a very good student. He is a very bright and talented guy. But you know, uh, what we do is quite a labor-intensive thing. And uh, besides his university uh, engagements and also some other activities uh, like uh, hunting for young women and playing on guitar, I'm, I'm not sure he has enough time for lab work, but, uh, but we hope he's going to change in the next years. And anyway, we, we are very happy to have him around. So Michi, it's, it's your turn. <laughs> Thanks for your introduction, <clears throat> dear guests, dear audience. Uh, my presentation is about studying the AM gene functions in Drosophila melalogaster with the CRISPR system. Drosophila melalogaster is our mother animal. Uh, they are cheap to keep and easy to grow. And they have small body size, a short life cycle, approximately 10 days and uh, they have a fully sequenced genome. Uh, and it is also noticeable that roughly 60% of the human proteins are homologous in Drosophila, so they are useful disease models. Uh, forming proteins are important like regulators of uh, development of actin cytoskeleton. They catalyze the nucleation and elongation of actin filaments. Um, and among others, filopodia formation, which is a actin filament based structure. Um, our research is focused on uh, functional characterization of the AEM gene. This gene is important for the development of axons by the growing cone, and uh, it is also required for the neuromuscular junction. Uh, here I show you the organization of this gene. It contains many introns, coding and non-coding exons. There are alternative transcripts, RB, RD, RE, and RA. Uh, earlier research is revealed with RB um, is important in the central nervous system and RD is required for the development of muscles. Um, these transcripts has different transcriptional start sites and promoters. RE and RA um, functions remain unclear yet. Mm, our aim is to study the function and expression of RE and RE transcripts of Drosophila DAM gene um, to help these uh, functional studies I want to create deletion mutants by a CRISPR system. Uh, uh, we can induce double standard breaks in the DNA by this system. And uh, after mitogenesis, we analyze the phenotypic changes and make conclusions about the functions of these isoforms. The CRISPR system is first discovered in bacteria where it has an antiviral function. Uh, this system is based 
in a protein RNA complex, uh, which can catalyze a double standard DNA break at the cleavage site. The protein component is a Cas9, an, an RNA associated endonuclease, uh, and the RNA component is a short guide RNA, which has a specific DNA recognizing particle at the fine prime end. Uh, this particle is the oligo of this system. Um, PAM sequence is an NGG sequence in the target DNA, and uh, this increases the binding activity of the CRISPR complex. We can create deletion mutants by CRISPR system. The first uh, step is designing oligos for the CRISPR system. Uh, cleavage size before and after the transcriptional start and the first exon. Mm. After designing, we have to clone the oligos into appropriate plasmid vectors and then inject these final constructs into the animals. And after that, we sort the progeny by PCR. Mm. As I said above, the, uh, we inject the final constructs into the posterior pole of Cascadence expressing embryos of Drosophila. And uh, if the targeting occurs, it will be inherited to the offsprings. And after the establishment of the stable stocks from the offsprings of the muta mutation induced embryos, we can select the mutants by PCR or other genetic methods. Current phase of the project. I have successfully designed primers to detect the targ targeted mutations and uh, the oligos for the mutagenesis. And uh, I've also optimized the PCR conditions. Furthermore, I have successfully cloned uh, the oligos into appropriate plasmids. Um, the cloning of remaining oligos and the uh, injection of already made constructs are in progress. Um, if we can successfully finish these experiments, uh, we will have hopefully gene uh, deeper insights, not only into the function of these forms, but also into the mechanism of neuromuscular junction development, where we expect these isoforms play an important role. I would like to thank to my supervisor, Adam Meeg, and my mentor, Joseph Mihai, and the Developmental Genetic Workgroup of VRC. And thanks for your attention.